remember this is very very important in neck swelling neck is a complex anatomical area comprised with many components there are so many triangles tubes like trachea esophagus vessels lymph nodes thorough anatomical knowledge of the area is very very essential to have a clear finest surgical practice it is so compact area so many structures are there so we should have a clear idea about the surgical anatomy of the neck commonest cause of the neck swelling is lymph node there are so many structures artery is there trachea is there esophagus is there muscles are there nerve bundles are there soft tissues are there but commonest cause is uh, lymph nodes in the neck to cause enlargement of the as swelling so that's why you should know the briefly about the exact anatomical nature of of the lymph nodes in the neck these are the different groups preauricular submandibular submental uh, upper deep cervical and so on and we have got a level that is for mainly for cancer patients 1a 1b 2a 2b 3 4 5a 5b 6 7 of course detail of this one i am going to discuss at a later period when you discuss about the how to examine the neck lymph nodes now if you see that there is a what is called as waldier ring inner waldier ring and outer waldier ring it is a group of lymphatics located inside inner aspect of the neck and outer aspect of the neck area so outer waldier ring is postauricular preauricular parotid occipital uh buccal all those are outer waldier ring that's not which is important but not as like inner waldier ring which is inside it's not visible but it is very very important especially in the lymphoma and many other conditions so what are they look at this posteriorly in the midline you have got adenoids and laterally you have got your tubal tonsil still further in front laterally you have got palatine tonsil this is the one which we usually traditionally call as Uh, call call as a tonsil and in the midline posterior third of the tongue we got a lingual tonsil so in order from behind front adenoid tubal tonsil palatine tonsil lingual tonsil of course this will communicate with the neck node retropharyngeal nodes all those things so this is called inner waldier ring and outer waldier ring is different inner waldier ring is different see this is how exactly neck nodes look like clinically now history taking like i said earlier class is very very important for neck swelling so relevant history is age you know that cystic eugrema occurs in the newborn sternomastoid tumor with the torticollis occurs in infants due to birth trauma if you know that during delivery there may be some injury to the neck so there may be some problem can occur into the sternocleidomastoid muscle hematoma can occur then it will not function properly especially tunnel head of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and need to cause for fibrosis so child will have chin like this and neck contorted like this so entire this half face development will be inadequate so small size this is small side like this you got a stiff sternocleidomastoid muscle like this so that is that occurs in the infants due to birth trauma bronchial cyst even though it is congenital occurs in adults and maybe second decade 20 25 year age group bronchial fistula it occurs again since birth it is present in since birth there is opening in the neck lower part of the neck often it is bilateral tuberculous lymphadenitis occurs in young individual then lymph nodes in the neck will be affected by the tuberculous infection and there will be different presentations of this tuberculous lymphadenitis occurs in young maybe 20 30 that age group and hodgkin's lymphoma is a malignant primary malignant lymphoproliferative disease of the lymphatic uh, lymph nodes which occurs in both age group it's got a bimodal presentation bimodal means younger age group elderly so children and elderly so bimodal presentation can occur and carcinoma secondary occurs in elderly metastatic disease or carcinoma in the neck node this is not uncommon it occurs in elderly and benign swelling occur in the mid age so many benign swelling can also can occur in the mid age but what we are worried is these things mainly tuberculosis hodgkin's lymphoma carcinoma and congenital conditions sex nodal disease see second disease in the neck is very common in males where thyroid is a neck swelling again neck swelling but we are not discussing thyroid here we are discussing mainly non thyroid neck swellings but thyroid disease is common in females overall commonest cause is lymph node enlargement remember 
occupation also important laryngo cell is common in trumpet blowers they blow this one so that because of the high pressure thyroid membrane forms a projection here and they will have impulse on coughing also carotid body tumor is seen in high altitude people because of the temperature changes address is important thyroid uh, swellings occur commonly in certain geographic area like that so many swellings are more common in certain areas so address is very important see that look at this cystic hygroma in a newborn infant so large swelling it's a lymphatic uh, swelling actually torticollis i already told chin turn to the opposite side and bronchial 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 cyst see that from the second bronchial cleft it is it occurs in the adolescent in this location see that bronchial fistula see that see that small opening here where discharge gel like fluid comes and cholesterol abscess or tuberculous abscess here in the neck in the younger age group maybe second third fourth decade second is in the neck usually look at that elderly patient so get the look up the secondary laryngocele i already told hodgkin's lymphoma occurs either in the young age group or elderly see that in young boy here maybe around 15 year old he has got a neck node which is typical of the hodgkin's lymphoma now history of present illness is very very important see that swelling is most important thing in history of present illness is swelling you have to look for duration onset progress recent increase in the size number all these things should be asked for because it got it has got its own significance see acute inflammation is a very short to duration and malignancy is short to duration maybe few weeks few months one month two months three months like that not years together tuberculous lymphoid it takes few months maybe 6 months 7 months he will say 